Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to look into the database system architecture. In our initial videos, we have seen the characteristics of database approach. So here we are going to learn about an architecture for database systems called the three schema architecture that helps achieve the characteristics of database approach that we have already discussed earlier. And with the help of three schema architecture, we will also learn the concept of data independence. This is a three schema architecture. The goal of this three schema architecture is to separate the user applications and the physical database. The user application is at the topmost level of the database system and the physical database is at the lowest level. Here schemas can be defined at three levels. The first level is the internal level. This internal level has an internal schema and this schema describes the physical storage structure of the database. And this internal schema uses one of the category of data models that is the low level or the physical data models which we discussed in the previous video. It uses that physical data model to describe complete details of how data is stored and the access paths for the database. We have also seen what an access path is in our previous video. So this is one of the levels of the three schema architecture, the internal level. The next level in our three schema architecture is the conceptual level. The conceptual level has a conceptual schema and this schema describes the structure of the database. This schema hides the details of the physical storage structure of the database and it concentrates or focuses more on describing entities, data types, relationships, constraints, attributes, etc. Again, we have already seen the definition of all these terminologies in our earlier videos and these terminologies will be useful further. So that is about the conceptual level. The topmost level that we have in our three schema architecture is the external level. The external level has a number of external schemas or external views and each external schema describes the part of the database that a user is interested in and hides the rest of the database from the user group. That is, an external schema or view contains only that data which a user group is interested in and hides the remaining database from that particular user group. So this level has a view for each user group. So this is about the three levels and because it has three levels, it is called as three schema architecture. Here in the three schema architecture, each user refers to its own external schema. So any request specified in the external schema is sent to the conceptual schema by the DBMS and further that request is sent to the internal schema for processing. If the request from the user is a retrieval of data from the database, then data is extracted from the stored database. This process of transforming requests and results between these three levels is called as mapping. So this is all about three schema architecture. As I said, with this concept of three schema architecture, we can further explain the concept of data independence. First, let us see the definition of data independence. Data independence can be defined as the capacity to change the schema at one level of a database system without having to change the schema at the next higher level. That is, without data independence, if we make any changes at the internal level or to the internal schema, then we have to change the higher levels too. But with data independence, when we change the schema at one level, it doesn't affect the schema at higher levels. Schemas don't change frequently, but if required to change, with this concept of data independence, any changes made to the schemas will not affect the higher levels. Hope you understood the definition of data independence. Now let's look into the types of data independence. The first type of data independence is the logical data independence. Logical data independence works between the conceptual schema and the external schema. Now what is logical data independence? It is the ability or the capacity to modify the conceptual schema without having to change the external schemas or the application programs. For example, if I want to add a new data item or a new attribute, then that modification of the conceptual schema will not affect the external schema because of logical data independence. 
we can alter the table in any way in this schema without having to change the external schema or the application programs that refer this conceptual schema. So this is about the first type of data independence, the logical data independence. The next type of data independence is the physical data independence. This type of data independence works between the internal schema and the conceptual schema. Physical data independence is defined as the ability or the capacity to modify the internal schema without having to change the conceptual schema. Changes to the internal schema could be like changing the file location, the access paths, etc. But this does not alter or change the conceptual schema as long as the same data is stored or present in the database. And this modification or changes are required or may be needed to improve performance. Like for example, changes to the access path might be required to improve the retrieval speed of a particular record. And this is about the second type of data independence, the physical data independence. That's all about data independence. And this data independence occurs when we have to change the schema at one level without affecting the schema at the next higher level. Only the mapping between the two levels is changed. With this, we come to the end of this video. Hope you understood the concept of three schema architecture and also the concept of data independence. Thank you.